We've talked a lot lately, a lot, about missions <laughs> on Mars, but now NASA has announced an exciting new part of its discovery program to visit Venus. The agency will send two missions to our planetary neighbor later this decade in 2028 and 2030. We're very excited to bring in Thomas Zerbukin. He's the associate director for NASA's Science Mission Directorate. Thomas, good morning. Thank you for being here to talk about this. We're so excited to have you. So what do we hope to learn about Venus from these missions? I know we haven't been there in a while. Oh, yeah, we have not been there since uh, we turned off the last mission in the mid-90s. And so it's, it's really time to go back. We have a lot of questions about the origin of Venus. You know, Venus looks almost like the Earth in terms of size. It has a mm. hellish atmosphere, much, much hotter at the surface of Venus than even at Mercury and certainly at Earth. And we have a lot of questions about how that planet that presumably started very similar to the Earth ended up in that state. We're mm. looking at the surface and also the atmosphere with these two missions. You mentioned the hellish conditions, yeah. those extreme temperatures. I think I read around 900 degrees Fahrenheit, yeah. the atmospheric pressure. So how do you do that? What kind of technology yeah. will NASA be using to try and pull off the missions? So the first mission, the very first mission, is an orbiter. So it's going around and, and looking at the surface with two instruments precisely tuned Kind of taking advantage of, of everything we've learned so we can get through the thick clouds and look at the surface at a resolution that's about 100 times better than what we've done before. So we'll get maps wow. and look at volcanic origin. The other one, uh, Da Vinci will, if you want, descend into the, sur into the atmosphere and take measurements on the way down and look at the history of that atmosphere by looking at its composition and then image the surface when it arrives. Thomas, what are you most excited about for this next phase of space exploration? I mean, going to Venus, what do you want to learn from them, from there? You know, for me, the question about life on Earth, life on Mars, life on Venus, is really the question that is mm. urgent and it's important right now. And we want to learn about the origin of life on Earth by learning about the neighborhood planets, about mm. Mars bringing samples back about Venus, really learning about whether there was, in its past, a possibility for it to carry light. Do we know, we know it's been decades since we've really been exploring Venus. Why was it that stopped, and what is it that sort of got us interested in it again? For me, it's really the uh, tremendous evolution of knowledge, uh, both about Mars and also about the ancient Earth that really makes Venus way more important. In addition to that, you know, we have over 4,000 exoplanets that we found in st uh, at stars around uh, our own galaxy, and so many of them are Venuses. And we need to understand that kind of, you know, thick atmosphere carrying a planet next door to understand these others. So for me, mm. the questions are just way more urgent today than they were even five, ten years ago. So, Thomas, you mentioned that you think it was this atmosphere that was similar to Earth's, and then how does it end up in that state? What kind of lessons can be taken? I mean, when you send these two missions, can they gather information that's something that we can kind of put into use here on Earth? Is that something that you'll be able to learn? Absolutely. So whenever we, you know, we, of course, sit on a, on a planet that has a fragile atmosphere as well, with an atmosphere that's changing and is affected uh, by natural uh, sources, but also by human-induced change, right? And, and so for us, what mm. we'd really like to learn about this other atmosphere, kind of a, an atmosphere that really went badly, you know, the Venus yeah. atmosphere is like how the, well, as we call it, the runaway greenhouse effect can really occur. So for us, learning about this other planet really helps us learn about our own home, the, the planet we most right. love. Mm. Thomas, we are big fans here of the mini helicopter on Mars. So if you can do anything to get like something like that on Venus a few Send years from ingenuity now, we're huge over. fans here. <laughs> we're, we're into that. Uh, you know, uh, one of the things we're really excited about is uh, the possibility of with as we go to the planet, perhaps thinking about sending some new technologies uh, even on the ground. It, it won't be a helicopter, but, uh, you know, we'll keep you posted. We're, there's interesting <laughs> thoughts going on right now. We love it. Thomas, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank Good luck you. with everything. We appreciate it. We're going to hold you to keeping us posted. We'll see you soon. All right. <laughs> hey, NBC News viewers, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.